Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me on the rock here in Brigantine. Always great to be over here. And let's go, Eagles. So obviously, uh, you know, we've gotten involved in this at, uh, at the state legislative level uh, with what we can try to do. You know, as the, I've been here my entire life, you know, 51 years, and obviously what we have experienced since the beginning of December is just completely unprecedented and not the norm uh, when we started having all these humpback whales wash up, in addition to other marine life. There's been eight, you know, New York, New Jersey. There's additional ones, Assateague Beach, Maryland, Virginia, a little bit north. It is very frightening what is going on right now. So, like the mayor just said, and the mayor and council here have been incredible leaders on the topic, obviously, as you know. Uh, but we started educating ourselves, and I got educated, and so started taking a look at what is going on with the federal regulation and then the state support. Communicated directly with the governor himself, because obviously this is very, very concerning uh, to all of us, what is going on down here. Uh, so I've been interacting with him himself. I've been interacting with his staff. You know, and when you look at what is going on with these wind farms, I think any time in government, I think the mayor said it, you want clarity and you want transparency and you want to know what is happening. And so as I got myself educated about this, got a little more worrying because when you, I went to the, you know, the press conference the environmental groups had, you know, where they were trying to push to keep going with these efforts. I listened to the, um, the update that the federal regulators did with the press, you know, BOEM, we have these acronyms for these federal bureaucrats in Washington, Bureau of Ocean Energy Management is the one key one that is regulating this, and they did an update with journalists uh, where they talked about what is going on. And of course, if you listen to them, you know, they will repeatedly say, no direct impact. Well, I mean, we know that you're not directly drilling into whales and killing them. We know that your ships, while you're doing the surveys, are not directly killing any whales. But what is happening? Something is going on here. And so when you listen to them, there are these independent take authorizations. And people are more familiar with this than me, but they have been granted authorization to disrupt the behavior of marine life. That has been granted by the federal government. And <laughs> And then when you hear them talk and they say no direct impact, you know, one of the things they talk about all the time, there's two different types of activities going on out there. The sonar is happening. Of course, we've all heard about the sonar. That is being done, you know, to measure the depth of the water, map the seafloor to see how long the poles have to be to get out of the water. They're also drilling. And so, you know, to see how, how far into the seabed the monopoles have to go. In the beginning of January, when these really started, both of those activities were going on, and they were not clear, and they were not transparent on it. They try to point to the sonar, and they try to say, you know, sonar's not having an impact, but they were also drilling. Orsted was drilling, Atlantic Shores was doing the sonar. So both of those activities were going on, and clearly anyone looking at the situation, knowing that this has never happened before in our history, certainly we get concerned you have drilling, you have sonar, you have disruption to marine life, either the bait fish is coming in closer to the shore, getting in the shipping channels, getting hit, or the whales themselves are just coming in closer to the shore to get away from that because they don't like what is going on out there, and they're coming in closer to the shore and getting hit. We acknowledge that, the, that a lot of them are due to vessel strikes, but why? There's, it never has happened before, ever. And so that's what we are we're concerned about, and that's what we remain concerned about, and that's why we have called for a pause. Just wait. Let's just awe. And I know some of the trades people are here, some of the other people pro wind are here. Let's take a break. Let's take a deep breath, and let's try to figure out. Try to figure out what's going on together. We all have an obligation to try to understand what is going on. And in a 30-day period, we could have the full necropsies, and we could also get clarity from the federal regulators and from the companies that are doing it. What were you doing? Where were you doing it? And when were you doing it? So that we understand if this was any type of correlation or any type of impact on what is happening to marine life. We, are, we potentially could disrupt the entire marine ecosystem. A lot of these whales are humpbacks. But 
you know, the right whales are down to a population of about 350 total. And so we cannot take a chance that we are going to disrupt the entire marine ecosystem with what we have going on out there. And so we remain... We remain steadfast in our call to take a break, to work together, you know, with the companies, with the federal regulars, with everybody, so we can try to get an understanding of what is happening, why it is happening, because, you know, and I, the hypocrisy, and I pointed this out as we talk, imagine, imagine if off the coast of Brigantine, we were drilling for oil, and you had one dead whale wash up. Environmental groups would be strapping themselves to the oil rigs to prevent anything from happening. That's what would be going on. So like the mayor said, why is this different? It should not be different. We have an obligation to try to get to the bottom of it. We have an obligation to figure it out. We need clarity. We need transparency. We need these federal bureaucrats to get out of their offices in D.C., to come here to Brigantine, to work with us to figure out what's going on. And that's what we're going to continue to call for. <laughs> so that's it. Now, next thing. I just want to mention real quick, because we're working really hard with our state government now. Obviously, BPU regulates a lot of this stuff, but we need clarity and we need transparency on costs and what is the impact of all of this going to be. We are all for renewable energy, wind, solar, you know, if we can do harness wave energy, great, let's do it. But it's got to be... Thanks, Carol. It's got to be an all the above approach. It can't be limited to one thing. We're not going to electrify the entire state. It's not possible. Look at what's going on in California where they have to, they literally with these smart meters go in and turn people's thermostats up because they don't have enough power to keep their air conditioning going. That's what's happening in California. It's unbelievable what is going on right now. It's just not possible to electrify everything. It's not feasible. It's not going to happen. And think about 95, you know, if you're heading, heading on the I-95, and we have one of those snowstorms and everybody's stuck in their electric vehicles and can't charge them. It's, it's, we need. So we're going to continue to push for an all of the above approach. Obviously there's emerging technologies with nuclear, some small cell nuclear, you know, obviously renewable part of the conversation. And, uh, you know, let's do an all-the-above approach because we got to bring energy to people, obviously. we got to do it at reasonable costs, too. And we got to make sure in the highest taxed, most expensive state in the nation that we aren't just doing something to further make it tougher to raise a family, to work in New Jersey, and to put food on the table for all of our families. And so that's what we're going to be answering. So we'll continue to be your voice, you know, we'll be in Trenton, we'll continue to be that voice. We're going to continue to push for what we're pushing for, believe very strongly that there should be a break, we should work together, and so that's what we're going to advocate for and make sure we're advocating all the above energy approach. Let's bring people uh, energy they can afford and let's lower the cost uh, of people being able to live in the state of New Jersey. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.